Howdy folks. Let me just let everyone know that we're starting up here. Okay, let's have a look at the frame rate first. That looks good. My audio levels look good, but let me know. Please confirm that it sounds okay. Um, oh, I have tea, which is good. It's been too hot to drink tea the last couple of days. I mean, yesterday was sweltering, but um, today, in the evenings there's a nice cool breeze in here tonight so I can drink my tea comfortably. I had to think what day it was. I should know that when I start the stream, that it's Wednesday because I normally stream on a Wednesday. But honestly this week has just been, the last week as in not Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, but since last Wednesday, it's been chaos here at Folknology Towers. I've had a lot of stuff to do. Most of it, nothing to do with <coughs> black edge stuff, I'm, I'm afraid. Um, just other life stuff getting in the way necessities etc audio is fine uh, Laurie says just about survived the heat well you didn't melt then I luckily didn't um, it was incredibly hot for us um, I post you I post is gonna laugh at us you know just because we got 40 plus just above 40 they have that that all the time and more but uh yeah for the uk well it broke records it's never been that hot here before since records began it's just nuts insane temperature for the uk but i'm afraid there will be more of that um, in the near future it's not going to get better it may only get worse, I'm afraid. But apart from that, I hope everything else is good. So the reason my life has been so crazy in the last week is um, I ran out of finance. Um, which I obviously need, not just for life's normal things like paying mortgages, etc., and buying food, but um, Black Edge needs funding as well. Um, and my savings have been used up, so I've had to um, pick up some uh, contract work. But I've also been applying for a bunch of other roles which has been really interesting but super super intense out there um, you just get un inundated the moment um, or certainly in electronics and embedded you just get inundated as soon as you change your CV online it just goes a bit bonkers I wouldn't mind so much but a lot of it's just wasting your time quite frankly they don't actually look it's all keyword based it's all rubbish but um, yeah, so I've had, um, I've lost count 
how many interviews I've done. A lot. Um, luckily, they're all mostly online now. Um, but I've also had some really interesting ones. And one of them, I've already had an initial interview and then I had to do a 48 hour test, which I've never done before. Um, and then this afternoon, I did a third interview with them online grilled by a whole bunch of them um, highly highly technical but also a bunch of other stuff as well that went on for about two hours finished at um, six o'clock as well as doing all the other stuff I've had to do today so it was um, super intense but the company involved is just um, an unbelievable company. I, I can't really talk about it, I'm afraid, but they are. I didn't even know uh, how far this company was ahead, and I had no idea that there was a company in the UK that was so uh, advanced uh, in this area. So it's a very highly desirable job. It's not actually paying that well, unfortunately. And it is primarily an electronics role. And I normally do hybrid type of uh, electronics come firmware roles. Maybe with a bit of FPGA thrown in occasionally as well. But um, yeah, I normally span that divide. But this case is they primarily want uh, just uh, electronics, but the electronics they want is all high speed stuff. It's very, very um, demanding um, but the company itself is it's a startup but it's not a small startup they have super huge funding like you wouldn't believe and they are joined up with some very very big names in a very new area and they are a relatively small team there's only about 40 people something like that but, um, and they are literally, I had no idea, but they're about half an hour from my house, incredibly, um, very close to somewhere where um, myself and my partner lived uh, many, many years ago. So that's been a really, really interesting thing. I've never had a recruitment process that's been this intense before. They really are. Clearly they have a lot of applicants and a lot of people would want to work for this company um, because it it isn't state of the art, it's well beyond state of the art. The, the stuff that they're doing is just mind bending, quite frankly. So I couldn't help but apply. Um, so there's that, and I've also been applying for contracts and stuff as well. So it's been super, super intense on top of everything else. And um, it's been very interesting, really. But it's usually time consuming. Um, so I haven't had anywhere near the time that I would have liked over the last week or so. It's been super, super intense. And... Um, Quite frankly, I'm at the end of it now. I have options, I've got offers and stuff, so I've just got to decide which way to go. Um, moving on, in other news, um, take a look here. Um, this is probably what we're going to be uh, talking about. All day. I'm going to post this in Discord and on the stream. I've been asked to do a talk, relatively short notice actually, but um, I have had a bit longer, but because of everything else going on, I haven't had time. To do it. Now, I've been setting up what I'm going to talk about today. Um, I'm not sure if you're in the UK, you might be familiar with these guys. I've, I've 
you know, I've done quite a bit of quite a few talks for BCS and BCS are involved in amongst other things, the Oshkamp group. Um, the Oshkamp group got rehoused as one of the subgroups of um, BCS. If you don't know what the Oshkamp is, that's the open source hardware user group. And Oshkamp is one of the events that regularly takes place but hasn't for the last couple of years because of COVID obviously. Um, so um, I don't know if you know Richard, but uh, Richard Miller uh, is very much involved in BCS and has been for years. Uh, he helped do some work. He did. He helped us get um, the original Black Eyes Two working on Arduino, among other things. Um, he uh, he asked me to do a talk. Could I do a talk? So I said I would do a talk. Um, Part of which will be about Black Edge. Um, and I'd like to do part of it, just do a bit of Amaranth so people could see that. And um, that's one of the things I want to talk about this evening. Work out what the best thing to do is on that front. I've pretty much done the Black Edge stuff. I know what I'm going to say there. I know I'm going to do it. I'm it's really going to be a, a walk through the history uh, of what uh, brought us to this point. But what I would not, what I'd like to establish uh, this evening is what I should do because it'd be nice to do a little demo. Um, it's all happening remote, by the way. I'm I'm doing this from uh, from home remotely not going in normally you go into BCS it's in London uh, near Liverpool Street but um, they, they were thinking of doing this this month um, open but in the end they decided to opt for safety and they've gone remote I think in September they may do the um, their first physical event again for uh, the open source specialist group But this one is going to be online, so I'm going to be doing it from home. And I've also got to be down at the South Coast tomorrow because I'm doing some work down there, um, which is going to be a very long day. And then I've got to drive back in time to do this, um, which is, I, I'm sure I'll manage, but it's going to be a bit of a little bit of a panic and stress. I'm hoping the traffic's good with me tomorrow. Um, So the question is, what do I show? I want to be able to show, I mean, obviously I'm going to go through on the hardware side, how we've gone from Black Ice 2 all the way through MX, through to tiles and Black Edge, etc. But I, 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 my principle here is talking about modularity and to a degree rapid prototyping, etc. in a you know complex environment using FPGAs uh, and also microcontrollers. So I want to be able to show some Amaranth code. I think that shows it off best, but I'm not quite sure what the best demo would be. It needs to be simple, otherwise it's likely to go wrong. It's always the case with these damn things. Um, unless you've got lots of time to practice something, which I don't have in this case, then it needs to be kept relatively simple. But yeah, I want to show what we can do. I guess. So please, if you've got any ideas, let me know. And we can look at what we can do presentation wise um, for tomorrow. Um, what are your thoughts? Please let me know. I know Laurie's already in the, I don't know who else is in here. I know Laurie's there. Perhaps you've got some suggestions, Laurie, about what I should show as a kind of demo. and I get the uh, online stuff working as well. I've got to use something else that I haven't used before. Um, seven segment stuff is simple and visual. Yeah, that might be a good idea, Lloyd. Relatively easy, isn't it? 
to uh, kind of understand as well. See Lion. What? Yeah, he's trying to recommend I upgrade something. Um, well, that's some nice logic deck. I probably need that open. Might need black crab as well. QSBI MEM shows link between MCU and FPGA, but it's more complex. It would be nice to show it. I'm not sure we ever can demo for it though. VGA is another possibility, as it's hard to do from MCU. Yeah, the only trouble with VGA, it's difficult to show um, as an on-screen. Uh, so I'm probably going to count that out, um, Laurie. I think your initial one was a better idea, seven segment. But I can see what you mean, because yeah, well, anyone can do a seven segment. You don't need an FPGA for that. Um, whereas VGA is a bit more tricky. Um, I don't, shame I don't have a capture. I don't have a capture. I've got the HDMI capture, but I don't have the uh, HDMI, the new HDMI tiles yet. I don't have a VGA capture facility. Um, that might also be tricky online for an online um, talk as well, running that at the same time. Um, Pretty sure I don't have a VGA capture handy. I think longer term a HDMI demo like that would be a good candidate, most definitely. Um, Nori says my QSBI peripheral demonstrates right into 7 seg LEDs UART and LCD from PC via the STM32. Well that might be good. Is it um, easy enough to operate and get, get running? And not too flaky. Um, Nori, is it uh, easy to uh, To script in, you think? Presumably, that's on one of your forks. The LCD bit is a bit flaky. Could we omit the LCD bit, perhaps? Take the flakiness out. We've got the blade for LEDs and we've got seven segment. We could use those two, I guess. <coughs> Sorry, let me just go see if I can go full screen here. That's a bit better. God, I'm so exhausted. This week's going to be really long. I've got two very long days. 
tomorrow and Friday as well. Um, but the only flakiness is you might not see anything on the LCD. Well, my LCD is so flaky anyhow, I probably wouldn't want to use it, um, Laurie, because it's to get it to work, I have to kind of, um, you know, hold hold the flex cable at a weird angle and then it sometimes works and sometimes doesn't let alone any flakiness in the HDL or software. It will be um, asking for trouble. I mean, it would be nice to do eventually because it will be a good visual one, but I think we've just got to, you know, avoid anything that's slightly flaky but I'll sit back a bit longer finish my tea whilst Laurie's um, putting in some suggestions Do, 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 do. Oh, sorry, do excuse me for yawning, but yeah, to be honest, I haven't slept that much. It's a bit stressful. Uh, and some fairly early starts, and more to come. Um, Laurie saying uh, the UART bit depends on external USB to serial um, could possibly uh, you could take USB on peripheral and remove everything other than the LED in 7 segment that sounds like um, the safest plan the least risky um Sorry, I think. I think I need something relatively safe. Did that link, by the way, to um, the open source specialist group work at BSC? Do you see the um, uh, the uh, event? I better check in case I'm not logged. I I might be logged in. Um, so it might be different for me. I can't even. Where did I put the bloody tab? There it is. Um, I'm just wondering if you guys, if you want to watch this as well, do pop along. You can provide me so, some, some su support, you know. Go, go, go. Go, Fognology. Um, it says here, for the online event, there is no requirement to register. You can just connect to the live stream using big blue button. That's the thing that I have to get working. Um, using this link, and there's a link there. Um thank you to gwdg for providing the hosting for this virtual meeting apparently there's it's a german university or something um we are also recording the talks for later pros later posting on our youtube channel the live stream link will be open from 1800 for networking uh, not quite sure how that works I, I don't even know what time i'm going to get back uh, i've asked to go on second because of that because I may be pushed for time. Um, the event will start at 18.30 prompt. We'll keep the link open afterwards for discussion. Etc, etc, etc. Yes, I think the link works, said Laurie, but their web page seems a bit buggy. It, it does seem a bit buggy. I'm seeing it clipping on the left-hand side, which is really odd. 
I think in this day and age you get something like that right. Some kind of CSS plug. I'm using um, Chrome. Uh, I'm guessing that you do as well, Laurie. Maybe it looks good on um, Firefox or um, I can't even remember what that bloody Microsoft one's called now. What's it called? Edge? Something like that? <sighs> Forgotten. Um, yeah. Just tried it on Bing. <laughs> it's just as bad. <laughs> wow, well, that's not good, is it? I wonder why that is. Very strange. I mean, this must be a template type thing. Looking at it. Maybe somebody's broken something when they've updated it. If I remember, I pointed out to Richard. And he'll probably say, nothing to do with me. I don't, I'm not involved in that side of the um, BCS. But yeah, he might be able to kick someone that is. In this day and age, you'd expect, um, you know, things to work. At least you to be able to see all the text it's just that top text isn't it, it seems to be aligned further left than everything else edge not bing i knew what you meant laurie <laughs> bing's a search engine isn't it um yeah that is kind of weird so I'll, i can show you, you guys here actually if i bring that up this called hardware. Now you can see it here on the left hand side. Can you see how it's cut things off? I wonder what happens if I um yeah like, even if I zoom in it didn't fix itself. Can you see? Really weird. Ooh. Yeah, I've kind of been out of touch with these guys for a while, to be fair. Um, I have actually started talking to people again. Uh, that makes it sound like I was purposely not talking to them, but that's not true. I've just been busy doing other things. But, you know, networking, if you like, talking to people I haven't spoken to in a while since pre-COVID. Normally I go to a lot of events, so I get invited to a few and do talks and stuff. But um, obviously through COVID that didn't happen. And things really haven't picked up at all in our area much yet this year. I know the kind of events I normally go to, I don't think any of them are occurring this year as far as I know. So, um, All the ones that I often get invited to talk at. Um, but I have been trying to, you know, talk to folks that I would normally see um, at these events and things, start connecting back up with people. Um, right, we should have a look. So where where is this uh, code? Is it on your fork of um, <sighs> where is it? Let me. I might already have this open. Hold on. Uh, my storm. My storm, my storm, ice logic deck. No, my storm boards. No, oh, um, before we move on to that, 
thank you for the link. I'll open that up whilst we're talking. Um, yeah, just other bits. I know Laurie's been working really hard on the uh, hi hyper ramp before, and now he's been working on the hyper flash. I nearly forgot to mention this. Um, and Laurie's actually got the hyper flash working, which is really, really cool. Um, so well done, mate. That's just brilliant. I'm so pleased that that's um, operational. Um, obviously, it's not going to be optimized at this point. That's going to take you know quite a while to get there. But um, latest report is um, let me quote Laurie what he said, and he can correct me if I'm wrong. I am now successfully writing Risk Five programs to the Hyperflash and executing them from it. Uh, Laurie is using the uh, um, Orchard. Uh, is it called Orchard SOC? Sorry, I forget the name of it. Um, which uh, Gatecat, amongst others, is working on. And that already had Hyperflash, sorry, Hyper RAM in it, which Laurie got working with it, and has subsequently been adding Hyperflash support over the last week or so. Um, then he goes on to say, um, executing Hyperflash from it. I am currently reading the program into BRAM and writing it to the Hyperflash in 512 byte chunks. But the 512, excuse me, byte chunk limit is down to me. That's because the current Black Crab implementation will not support more than one 512k chunk transaction over the USB yet. Uh, I need to improve that. I will get back around to that once all this other stuff has kind of settled down. But, um, so that's my fault but uh, so only up to 16 kilobyte programs work that way uh, I will need to use QSPY mem to write larger programs to the hyperflash but yeah that's fantastic really good well done Laurie brilliant um, you know that's a lot of work to get that working um, and then he goes on, he's actually talking about some of the optimization that needs to be done. He's, um, he's got some issues with the wishbone interface amongst other things. But it is working. Amaranth-Orchard, that's the name of it. Um, so that's very cool. Looking forward to having a play around with that later on. In the next few weeks, um, the other thing, the other thing, what else happened this week? Damn it, I've forgotten now. I finished all the PCB designs, including the starter board. That's all done. I still haven't ordered because I've got to sort something out before I do that order. Um, Yeah, I can't remember what it was. I'm sure it was something else I was going to say. Hmm. Anyhow, so um, let me have a look at this then. So, my storm, Amaranth examples, Cubus peripheral. I'm wondering what the best way of doing this is. Maybe downloading. Um, Separately downloading or checking out Laurie's fork might be the best way of doing this because I can't be doing all the merging right now. There's too much to do in that. That would take ages. Um, let's have a look. Oh, I updated the board files. That was the other thing I was going to mention because um, something I forgot to put on the board files before was that the um, Hyperflash has an interrupt as well, which goes to one of the interrupt pins, and that wasn't either in the PCF file or the boards file. So I've added that in as well. That was the other thing I was going to mention. Just a minor change that that, that is. But useful. Um, 
the thinking with the interrupt by the way is that interrupt gets triggered when the um, when the hyper flash moves from a busy state to a ready state so what I'm hoping for here is that if you're say doing an erase which takes a really long time by the way um, that when it finishes the arrays it will change the state of the interrupts so rather than you having to continually hang around polling the hyper flash you can go off and do something else and then come back uh, when the interrupt occurs um, you could even possibly use the hyper bus to talk to the ram in the meantime for example um, although there are all sorts of issues around that as uh, Laurie has been uh, discussing um, that's down on the storm sock uh, channel of discord by the way um, I can put a link in for the people that want to um, hold on uh, I don't know if that's a proper link or not. I didn't do it the normal way I do it. But down on I've I've asked um Laurie was asking where he should put the conversations around the hyperflash and I've said for now put it in the um, storm sock area because that's probably the most relevant quite frankly that's where it's going to be used most um, we did think about adding a separate HDL channel at some point but um, yeah that, I'm not sure about that the, the idea behind a HDL channel is ideas start off in a HDL channel and then migrate to something more specific later but yeah take a look at that and I've just gone and oh god such an idiot hold on I've just posted it in completely the wrong place forgive me it has been a long week and it's only Wednesday let me put this where it should be um, uh, Laurie's put a link into the live stream thank you Laurie for the uh, hyper flash test which is good and he says I have two separate controllers one based around based on the Amaranth Orchard is read only that uses the wishbone bus um, but for writing I wrote a completely new controller um, and as he mentions the 512 byte limit is a hyper flash limit not a black crab limit but it is a black crab limit as well in that we can only sun send one chunk at the moment uh, 512 is the maximum we can send with each transaction and we don't do fallover transactions so if I wanted to send something that was bigger than 512 I'd either have to send in break it up into individual 512 byte transfers or um, yeah fix the black crap software and add that feature to send things over that size Right, tea's finished. Let's see how we're doing on the waterfront, actually. Bear with me a sec, let me just grab some water. Hmm. looking at this code 
Uh, oh yeah, you got a UART in there. I might need to rip that out because I don't. Even though I do have one, I'd have to wire it up and test it. That just adds another extra thing to do. Qbus peripheral module. QSPI men. Um, 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 um. Oh, create you up. Get rid of that. Excuse me, hand that. Run this. That. So, when we've received something over QSPI memory to address aimed at address zero, then we copy the data out from the QSPI mem to the display. Um, then we've got to strip out the what's this? The top eight bits. Uh, LED blades and LED so we're taking some of the bits so that we can show the even lower resolution on the LED uh, blade and then more UART stuff so what do we do on here so Oh, oh, excuse me, keeping myself awake. Um, take that bit out. Uh, QSP and Perfect, so it's timing in alpha, good program. So, I, this is a bit mumbly, I'm just going through this code. Data. So, that's what we're sending. Hello, world. Command. So we're right. This address. What's the address? Zero. Two bytes big. Big Indian. Length data. Two bytes for big Indian. Plus data. Okay. Sending command. Plus send. So that's what we're sending. So does that get split then? Some of it gets sent to the um, uh, seventh segment, and some of it goes to the UART, right? So I didn't take notice of that when I was going through the code. How do we know what goes to the UART? Let me just check here. There's the lower byte and the upper byte. Ah, uh, Laurie's just done a simpler version for me. Thank you very much, Laurie. Extracting the UART.
Yeah, so the first three bytes are for the seven segment. That's what this is saying, right? So it's only copying this in after those first three bytes. After those first three there. And then it puts that on the FIFO and then it takes from the FIFO to the UART. Thank you. But let's have a look at the cut down version. It's going to be even simpler. Do you still need the um, buffer? FIFO. Oh, excuse me, Quacky, I'm keeping myself up. What is the time here? Anyway? It's only early. More lubrication required. three bytes <coughs> brilliant um, right I'm just trying to think the best way of doing this what's the dependencies here uh, don't need these two do we we can lose those two <coughs> excuse me me think I was just thinking of copying and pasting this but I don't I need the cue spine mem I don't have that um, a seven segment tile I don't know if that's changed or not let me just try something so the cue spine mem Just see what I've got here. Do did I download Cuse by Mem? Laurie's saying he doesn't think that the seven sex stuff has changed. Um, hold on, hold your horses because. Um, The seven sec tile. Let me just let's just uh, create a new um, tile here first. Let's just try this. Bear with me. Call this um, seven seg Q spy. What do you call it? <coughs> uh, seven seg. Uh, 
Oh, bear with me folks, I haven't turned on the IDE so you can't actually see what I'm doing here which is a bit um, rubbish. Would help if you could see it. some reason that's not showing up. Use by um. This is very annoying. Why is it not showing up? What is showing now? That is very strange. Let me just make this window a bit smaller. Oh! USPI mem, there's more than one file. Um, I need QSPI mem. Oh, well, I'm going to need a whole bunch of stuff, aren't I? So let's just go back to here. Is that picking up? Let me import QSPI mem. Seven seg tile import seven seg tile. being a bit pedantic. Seven seg tile. Maybe I spelled this wrong. Hold on. Hold your horses. Just check this stuff. Seven seg tile. 
seven sec tile. Okay. So why is this having a problem with that? Oh, donkey. I just put it in completely wrong place. Let me just move this. That's why I couldn't find it. <sighs> right. Yes, yeah, picking it up now. I think seven seg tile is in my new fork. Oh, this. Yeah, I think I've got that now. Um, so I've copied over by mem.py and seven seg pi. Do I need any of the other files for this? I better check cues by mem. Is this. Uh, Okay. Do I need like the low level Q bus thing? I can't remember now what it was. Or is that standalone? I wonder if I can. Um I need to get black crab running whilst I'm thinking about that. Operation timed out. Why did that time out? Do we have a problem? Just restart that. Hold on. Just trying to get black crab on the running. That looks better. So if I go back here. Mm, wrong window. Shh. I've got too many windows open as usual. Uh, what do I want? Choose by no, no, that's not what I wanted. Okay, so choose by memorable. Seven segment. If I do run on here, nothing nada. Wait a minute, what happened there? Program the ILB, process finished. Have I got the right tile? Uh, what do we got here? Blade one, yeah, tile three. That's right. Let's see anything on there. Guys, what have I done? Hold on. It's definitely talking to it. Black Crab says programmed ILB. Uh, this says, hold on, I've been only live just so you guys can see what's going on. Uploading ice core process finish with exit code zero. There isn't anything else here, is there? Send bus command, I wonder. Uh, so it should say sending command, shouldn't it? Oh, 
Oh, I've run the wrong thing. Oh! <clears throat> um. Six four two. Uh, where's my um? Uh, where the hell is? I did have some. Um,
one, two. Apologies, folks. Sorry about that. So whatever I did to get the um, board cam working did something such that the uh, audio settings decided to switch to my um, webcam not webcam to the uh, board cam and I don't think I've got any audio on that so it's a really stupid thing to do it's not that I muted it although I thought maybe I accidentally had it was literally um, my system my operating system in, in this case Ubuntu um, basically switching audio sources which is a pain in the ass. Anyhow, I'm back now. Apologies. That'll probably be on the final stream as well. Um, right, I can't remember what I was saying now. Yes, LEDs. Um, obviously, the numbers look good on the hex. On the uh, seven segment. The LEDs that I've got on here, I think are green, green, amber. It's difficult to tell because they're so bright there. Sorry, is that what you expected? Green, green, amber. So that's the, hold on, what, what are we sending? Come on, 04206, is, is that the B8? What does it do? Hold on. LEDs. <gasps> Excuse me. Um, display. Display. LED six equals QSBI memory D out. Is that the top six bits? Is that what that means? No. Uh, yes, B8 is the LEDs again, not too logical. Um, FBI idea is. Wait, LED6 equals. An LED equals just bit right. I'm confused. Hold on, what's going on here? B. So LED six and LED. Hold on. six and LED oh so the LED is the blue LED okay and the LED six is obviously the blade so bear with me sorry it's pinging me it might be urgent or maybe not Why is it pinging me? That's strange. Anxious emails. So the LED is the seventh bit, and the first six bits are for the blade. Right. Um, uh, 
so B6, it's going to be, uh, <laughs> I'm going back to basics here, my brain is fried today. Um, so, wait a minute, what am I talking about? So the second bit is uh, 0, 1, no, what am I talking about? One zero 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 and B when it might be is ten B is eleven, so that's gonna be uh, one and one one zero. So the minute, let me just check. So that's eight, and that should be twelve, right? So eight plus two is ten, plus one is eleven. So those bits should be blade, and then the top bit. Sorry, I really should um, zoom in. So that you can actually see what I'm doing here. I'm just decoding what this means, uh, which in binary I think it is. That's eight, and that should be twelve, which is B. Eight plus two plus one, ten, eleven. Right, is that right? Um, God, my brain is so fried. I've got a comma in just to make it easier. But these first six bits, mm, that doesn't really, hmm. No. Um, so those are the blade bits. One, two, three, four, five. No, those are the blade bits. So the first, yeah, the first three, in this case, I've got green, green, amber, which is that way, because it's the other way around. Confusing. And then zero, that's actually for the blue LED, because it's active low. And the one here doesn't matter. That could be zero. So this could be three rather than B. Might be slightly less ambiguous then. So if I save that and then I run that, I'll probably get the same result, right? Yeah, it's the same result. And that changes that to that. Oh, sorry, brain fart. That took me um, far too many minutes. But yeah, it all seems to be working. Um, I see what you mean about it being a bit confusing on the um, values, but um, we can work something out. I have something to go with. That's all I need for the demo, really. It's just showing the point of the system fact that we've done it all here in Python that's really the key for the presentation um, it's obviously ongoing anyhow this stuff isn't finished um, okay so that's good that's that tick box ticked so that should be easy enough to do tomorrow because that's working thank you so much for that Laurie that helps uh, what else was I going to say tonight? Where are we? 2117. We've got a bit of time. Okay, let's just go back temporarily to. Two, 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 two. The. Bigger window. Now I can sit down, have a drink and chat. So. Um, I've decided to put off the launch of Black Edge NXT. Black Edge NXT is now 
what we're talking about in terms of the um, boards. That's that's kind of the new name that I'm pushing. Um, just to give us time to get the documentation and software done. A technology, what is the state of the harbour order? Everything's done, I just haven't ordered it yet. Um, sorry, I will be doing that in the next few days, but it's just, I've just literally been inundated, even though I've finished all the stuff, all the design, um, including the new starter board. That's all done. Um, now the reason I'm putting off the launch is because I've got to get these new boards in, obviously. That's the most important thing. And the peripherals, and I need to get some made up for the, ready for the launch. So I don't yet have a launch date. Um, but I just want to relax a little bit more about getting that out now. Because um, I need to sort the finance out anyhow, which I am doing by doing some more work. But um, that just buys me a bit more time, really, before I do this launch. I am starting to make headway, thinking about what I'm going to do on the launch. Um, I am talking to people about, you know, getting some articles written and that sort of thing. Some early access to stuff, because uh, that's going to be needed as well. Um, and we will launch with a new version of the uh, Black, Black Edge NXT rather than Black Ice NXT top board, the mezzanine board. Um, and that's that's in the PCB order that I'm doing. So that's all done, polished. I'm happy with all that now. <clears throat> it's all ready to go off. I just need to sit down, double check it and then get it sent off. Um, which I'm hoping to do, I was going to do today, but it, it, it was just, it was just nuts today. I couldn't do it. Um, so, uh, it won't be done tomorrow because the next two days I'm down on the South coast, um, in the day and then back in the evening, um, doing this work. Um, so it's probably going to be the weekend before I get to, um, put the order in. Because tomorrow night I'm doing the, the talk, so I definitely can't do it then. Friday night is a possibility. Um, we'll have to wait and see. Um, but I'm kind of playing catch up. I keep putting off other bits. Um, it will get easier with any luck. Um, now that all the interviewing and all that stuff is all finished, I don't have that interrupting me and all the stress of that and all the things, the prep I have to do before that, etc, etc, etc. So I can sit back into a kind of um, more regular work schedule. Because I will be doing work in the day and the week, um, limited number of hours, but um, that will be more organised. So um, the first few days in the next week it's going to be mainly on site which takes a bit more time because I've got to drive there and drive back so I have a lot less time but then um, that will go hybrid what do they mean by hybrid now that means you know some some days uh, on site some days working from home so get that sorted the um, the work I'm going to be doing is um, basically a short contract, so yeah, just to um, boost the coffers somewhat. It's actually quite um, a weird piece of work. Actually, it's not necessarily hugely interesting. Um, it's really uh, it's mm, a combination of firmware and hardware, but it's porting some. Um, some boards to a new board. Um, what is going to be interesting about it for me is I'm going from an environment that I haven't used, both in terms of things like the IDE and the um, actual code, because um, I can't. I can't really. I better not talk about it because I don't know what I'm allowed to say about it or not. But um, 
let's just say the original code has been around since the 68,000s. Uh, Motorola 68,000, believe it or not. Um, and it has been updated an awful lot, but now it's finally got to be ported onto ARM and some new hardware. And actually, the interesting thing about this is it's going on to Renesos, uh, Renesas, sorry, um, ARM chip, which is an interesting device. It's a uh, A9, so that's going to be a whole lot of fun. Um, it's going to be mostly horrible, I'm sure, porting crap load of code onto that, but. Um, it would be interesting to use the um, the Renesis A9 device because it looks like a very interesting one and it's got a whole crap load of SRAM. I can't believe how much SRAM is available on it. Not only that, but on this particular design, there's external memory stuff and PLDs and it's quite complicated, but um, it's also got uh, display as well. Um, so uh, yeah, it's all in it's all in C, uh, Laurie. Everything's in C. No C plus plus. It's all C. Um, it's it, it's all the stuff that's there looks quite well written. It's very well modularized. Um, they've done a lot of the right things. You know, you've got U int eights and sixteens and all that kind of stuff. They're not using a standard one. They're using their own. Uh, their own types to do it but at least they've done it which is good um, but there's some real weirdness in it as well that uh, is going to be fun not only have they got all that they've got their own HTML library written in embedded C would you believe but it's it's not for what you think it's not like a server it's um, it's a way of producing output some of its XML, lots of tech stuff. As I say, there's a like a VGA display, LCD display thing. Uh, that's going to be fun because that's completely different from the old version. Um, most of the PLD stuff isn't changing. Um, there's a big motherboard. There's a big uh, back back plane, and there's lots of other boards that plug in and stuff. It's it's quite. Uh, quite um, an interesting system but I mean the good thing is they're not that heavily reliant on existing peripherals like you would in a normal microcontroller most of it's done across this uh, back plane and through the PLDs and stuff so uh, at least I'm not having to port all of that which is um, which is good so my head's going back into sea land for a bit um, for the day job, if you like. So I've got to do some of that and some hardware and there could be some other stuff, but I'll, I'll wait and see on that. Um, so that's what's going on with me. Um, uh, luckily it's paying very well. Um, I've agreed a very good rate. So I'm quite happy about that. That will help refill the coffers which I need to um, to get the Black Edge launch out as well. So that's quite important. Um, I might tell you about some of the other interviews I've had and the companies, uh, but I'm not going to talk about that quite yet because I, I need to be careful about that. Some of it's a bit sensitive, but. Um, I've had some really interesting ones and I got one today that is super super interesting I wish I'd got earlier but you know what it's like when you already you get something and then something else tips up a role came up I think it was today and it was uh, a company needs to port their Xilinx stuff onto Lattice and the firmware and stuff as well and I thought oh god this would have been you know spot on but uh, I've already, um, you know, accepted the offer for the other stuff, so I couldn't, couldn't, uh, couldn't change that at the last minute. But that sounded like um, a really good one to do.
but it's sort of law, isn't it? That comes in straight after I've done the others. But um, yeah, so I'm going to be busy for a couple of months doing this stuff as well. But I'm going to continue working on all the Black Edge stuff, of course. Um, the time I will be spending working on the um, the day job is actually quite reasonable. So it's not going to take up all my time, which is good. And as I say, some of it will be hybrid after the first week or so. So uh, I'm actually quite looking forward to it. It'll be a change. Although doing all the sea stuff again, it's going to be a shock. Going back to that after writing Ross for a few few months. I say a few months. I've been doing it for ages now. I know going back on that, I'm going to keep looking at it and thinking... I'm going to keep seeing all of the problem areas that you kind of avoid with rust. I will keep seeing it. I know it will. It will drive me crazy, but I've just got to kind of ignore that little voice in the back of my head because they didn't want it porting to rust. I did ask. They were like, what? What's that? I did look when I first started looking for, uh, you know, a new contract position because of the finance issues. I did have a look to see if there was any rust positions. I mean, there are lots of rust positions, but only in software. Not, I couldn't find a single arm embedded or any embedded rust stuff, not in the UK. I mean, you might be able to get some, maybe in Europe, maybe uh, in the US, but I, I couldn't find anything. And every, um, I talked to a lot of recruit, recruiters and agencies and contract people, and none of them have seen yet anything advertised on the rust side on embedded but uh, i thought i'd ask you know because there might be some stuff um and i didn't really go for too much fpga stuff because in the uk all nearly all of the fpga roles are vhdl and i'm i don't know nothing about that i've never done a vhdl so yeah just been interesting um sorry saying are you working mainly from home on that contract uh, initially i've got to be in the office because i've got to get a whole bunch of stuff set up um and i've got to learn their uh hardware and stuff but yeah eventually it will be, will be actually hybrid so i do some days at home some days there in the office because there's quite a few meetings and there's some people i have to work with and stuff um so uh yeah, it's going to be what they call a hybrid. So that's the news. That's all I was going to cover, I think, tonight. Because I need to... Um, I've still got a few bits I've got to do this evening. Are there any other questions or anything whilst I'm here? It's pinging me again. Who's sending me stuff? this time it's got to be emails right I think my phone's just behind still catching up right so if there's nothing more I think I'm going to call it for this evening uh, thank you for joining me um, my next stream will probably not be on Friday It'll probably be next Wednesday uh, I don't think I'm going to change streaming days or anything I'm going to stick to the uh, Wednesday for now um, I will of course be down on discord less in the day um, for the next week or so but um, I will generally be around and more in the evening probably on discord but um, in the meantime you can get me down there and uh, otherwise I'll speak to you all on the next stream so ciao